there's 1,200 tons of gold missing somewhere, and they either went to central banks or to stackers or to both, probably to both. In what proportions, I don't know. But this is a sign that both central banks and retailers are starting to get the picture that the dollar will not survive for much longer. I think somewhere around 1,200 tons of gold have gone into private hands, not into paper funds, out of the ETFs since 2020. That means the stackers are accumulating, and that is a good sign. The fourth quarter of 2023 saw gold's price increase more than 10% as it crossed the $2,000 per ounce threshold. It's now hovering around $2,045 per ounce. Several strategists in the gold space expect the precious metal rally to continue in 2024, and some even believe it could outperform all other commodities this year. An early December Reuters poll of 71 FX strategists showed expectations for the dollar to fall against G10 currencies in 2024, with the greater part of its decline coming in the year's second half. According to the analyst Rafi Farber, since 2020, around 1,200 tons have been unaccounted for, while dollar devaluation is imminent in 2024. While some may have gone to central banks, a significant portion is attributed to stackers, indicating a positive shift from metal derivatives to actual gold ownership. Globally, central banks continued to gobble up gold in November, adding another net 44 tons to their reserves, according to the most recent data compiled by the World Gold Council. Furthermore, Rafi stresses the significance of transparent gold holdings and questions historical regulations that favored gold ownership in jewelry over coins. Gold confiscation has happened several times in history, most notably in the United States in 1933, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued Executive Order 6102, which banned the hoarding of gold coin, bullion, and certificates within the continental U.S. He mentions that despite gold prices rising continuously, there's an ongoing decline in gold held in paper funds, especially in GLD and COMEX. Now we present the clips of Rafi Farber's insights from his recent video with Arcadia Economics. Before we continue to delve into this discussion, please subscribe to our channel and activate the bell icon for timely updates. This is total gold holdings, total transparent gold holdings on a monthly chart. Transparent gold holdings means uh, the amount of gold that are in transparent funds like GLD, like the COMEX, like anything that can be accounted for where we know the gold is, whether it's unallocated accounts or, uh, or ETFs or holdings, uh, let's say the Perth Mint or whatever it is that people might want to buy gold with. So this is that. And what we can see here is going back all the way to 1974, and gold was only legalized for ownership that wasn't in jewelry form, which is really pretty stupid. I mean, if you can own gold jewelry, you can own gold. So outlawing gold in monetary form, you can't have it in a coin, but you can have it in a necklace. I mean, how stupid is that? It's pretty damn dumb, which shows you the insanity of monetary policy, that they don't let you have a coin, but they let you wear a ring. Like, what the hell is the difference? Now let's zoom in on this chart a little bit, and we have the same thing counting from 2005 until today. So this really is the first divergence ever. You can see here the two lines pretty much going in tandem uh, proportionally to each other till we get to 2020 over here. And then at 2022, these lines diverge for good and they have not reconverged since then. We have a discrepancy here meaning the price of gold is going up, trending higher and higher and higher, which it will continue to do. But the amount of gold holdings in paper funds across the world keeps falling. I expect this to continue. Now let's go to another zoom in and you'll see what's happening here in close quarters. So somewhere around in this little box here, this little rectangle that I drew, somewhere around November, 2022, uh, Gold really took off here from a bottom of, I think it was 1618. There was like a little triple bottom over here and gold started to climb really quickly, but the paper funds did not store any more gold. So what it looks like is that paper interest or retail interest in gold funds started to die off over here and has been dying off ever since. Now, with this calculation on top, there's about 1200 tons unaccounted for. Uh, and I calculated that 
by uh, calculating the percentage of how much the gold price rose since this bottom over here until now, and uh, calculating what a, a, an equivalent amount of gold would have to be if there was equivalent interest in the paper funds from then until now, and I calculated about 1,200 tons. So that means about 1,200 tons of gold should be in the paper funds, mostly GLD, somewhat COMEX, uh, but they aren't. If there are 1,200 tons unaccounted for, the question is, where the hell are they? And you could say, oh, maybe they're in central banks. But I looked at the central bank buying over the last few years, and though it has increased since 2020 substantially, there has been substantial purchases by central banks of gold since 2011. And if central banks are buying gold from the ETFs and other paper funds, that wouldn't make much sense because then the ETFs and other paper funds would have fallen even starting in 2011, but they grew from since 2011 until 2020. So these 1,200 tons are not chiefly going to central banks. I think they're going to retailers because if somebody buys a few ounces of gold, say from Miles Franklin or whatever, then it's not accounted for in transparent funds because nobody knows that you actually have it. It's private. I think somewhere around 1,200 tons of gold have gone into private hands, not into paper funds, out of the ETFs since 2020. That means the stackers are accumulating, and that is a good sign. Rafi Farber predicts a significant year for silver in 2024. Observing its upward trend, despite volatility, consistent with historical patterns in 1979 and 1980, 1918 and 1919, and 1967 and 1968. The beginning of the rate cut cycle in 2024 may trigger a rally in precious metals and push silver to new highs. A move above the $26 level may push silver towards the next significant resistance level at $30. Meanwhile, Rafi advises to be ready for a crucial 2024 for silver, pointing to the unprecedented ongoing yield curve inversion and its potential impact on silver's value. Since the Second World War, every yield curve inversion has been followed by a recession in 6 to 18 months. Two- and 10-year Treasury yields inverted in July 2022. Silver and gold prices tend to increase when there is a yield curve inversion. He also predicts the yield curve inversion will continue until the Federal Reserve shifts from QT to QE, anticipating bolstering the case for silver's value in the near future. Let's get back to the interview. 1974, December 31st, 1974 was when futures gold trading was legalized and they used this mechanism to control the gold price through derivatives. So anyway, you see here the yellow line and the blue line. The yellow line is the gold uh, value in dollars and the blue line is the amount of gold, the tons stored in transparent funds across the world. Now, what you see here from 1974 until 2020 is that the two lines are basically in tandem, more or less. It really picks up around 2005 when the GLD ETF is founded. Until then, owning gold in paper form or in derivative form was not that popular. Uh, but we still see it pretty much goes in line even before 2005 with the founding of the GLD ETF. Uh, and then at 2005, the blue line, the tonnage of gold held in transparent funds across the world, goes up along with the gold price. Uh, but we see something changing in 2022, to be precise, and we will zoom in there. You can see where the yellow line and the blue line intersect. That means the gold price is rising but the amount of holdings of physical gold in funds across the world is falling. And that has been the case since November, 2022. The question is why? I wanted to pay attention here to specifically the 200 week moving average of the ratio between silver and the CRB. The CRB index is general commodities and silver obviously is silver. And if this ratio is trending higher, that means silver is rising relative to other commodities. And this has been the case despite the volatility that we've seen, the extreme volatility we've seen, especially since 2008. And that's because of the inflationary and deflationary panics that have been encountered as this money printing scheme since 1933 has spun out of control. But I know, I understand, and I am part of this frustration, I understand that the silver price can be extremely volatile and frustrating, but if we just look at the 200 moving average here, meaning the line of silver relative to other commodities, we see 
that inexorably the value of silver is rising relative to other commodities. And this means that the moneyness of silver is gradually being revealed. And we know silver's behavior that that moneyness, the monetary nature of silver gets revealed very quickly in only a matter of months, as we saw in 1979 to 1980, as we saw in 1918 to 1919, as we saw in 1967 to 1968. When it starts, it doesn't take longer than a year, which is why you should be ready now because 2024 could be the year. Here is one reason why I say this. If you look at the yield curve inversion, meaning the spread between 10-year yields and three-month yields, the long-term and the short-term, once this monetary curve is inverted, goes below zero and the zero mark is over here, you can see I put red boxes and rectangles where it is inverted, where the spread between 10-year yields and three-month yields is below zero. This is the longest time ever that uh, yields have been below zero, that the spread between these yields have been below zero ever. In 2000, it was seven months that caused uh, monetary deflation, which caused a recession, which caused the dot-com bubble burst, et cetera, which led ultimately to the 2008 financial crisis centered on housing. Here, the uh, yield curve spread was below zero. The spread between 10-year and three-month yields was below zero, meaning three-month yields were above 10-year yields for 11 months straight. And that was the longest until that point. And now we have, they are below zero for 13 months. I measured this is by far the longest yield curve inversion in history. And it will continue like this probably for another few months until the Fed switches from QT to QE. With gold showing resilience and strategists predicting a continued rally in 2024, it remains a focal point for investors. The ongoing changes in monetary policies and the macroeconomic landscape could bring about pivotal moments for both gold and silver. What are your thoughts on these unfolding trends, and how do you envision the future dynamics of precious metals investments? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to support our channel and turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos. See you in the next video.